Hey guys, Gordon here from GCreate. It's been a while, but uh, we finally want to put up a couple cool new videos, uh, especially showing off how to design, slice, and 3D print uh, some of the objects that we've done over the years. And hopefully you guys can learn some, some something from this, and uh, it, it's really useful. So we figured what better model to start with than the GCreate rocket. Uh, for those of you who have never seen it, uh, this is the GCreate rocket. You can see it was put out... Uh, a while ago, back in 2014, and uh, this rocket was to celebrate the launch of our new website and uh, basically our new printer at the time. And uh, so it's kind of like a, a 1950s style type rocket with um, these three fins and this kind of bubble looking glass, uh, you know, dome that you can look out. Uh, anyway, it was it was meant to be a lot of fun. We, we were really glad to see that people absolutely love downloading and printing it, and it seems to be kind of spreading everywhere. So. What we went ahead and did was take this rocket and actually made a new one, which uh, kind of cleaned up some issues, but also, um, well, you'll see soon, but uh, hopefully it's a lot more usable. But uh, let's go ahead and dive right into that. So here's the model in all its glory. This is the uh, the G-Create rocket. You can kind of see here, this is, uh, this is done in 3D Studio Max 2011. Um, it's This is a great program for people who kind of have a, I guess, more of a mindset towards, there's a little bit of parametric design in here, but there's also some kind of um, uh, you know, polygonal and, and, and uh, I guess, mesh-based modeling tools. Uh, you can do nerves modeling, a few other things in the program. Uh, this is not supposed to be a 3D Studio Max tutorial or, uh, you know, official kind of like video from them, but uh, we're really, it's something I've been using for years. Um, I, I wouldn't recommend it as the beginning software to try and learn how to design because it is kind of complicated, but it's, it is powerful nonetheless, and it really is a great program, uh, especially as you can see what we can do with it. Uh, so, anyway, so because I've known the program for years, this is what I, I like to use, and uh, here's the uh, G-Create rocket. Uh, you'll see that um, this is just the rocket itself. There also happens to be a nose cone up here, which is detachable. Uh, this is done on purpose because it's, uh, A, for this new rocket model, this has to be detachable, but uh, also because, uh, B, <laughs> this is uh, kind of a tricky portion of the print, so we figured if, if it fails, at least you're not losing all the plastic below. Now... The interesting thing about this new rocket that uh, we're hopefully launching real soon, you look inside, it's actually hollow. So this entire rocket itself is now hollow with a slot on top. Well, this slot is so you can put money in. So yes, this is actually a money piggy bank type rocket. So I guess it would be a money bank or a rocket bank. <laughs> so... We, uh, we took the old rocket, we kind of cleaned up a few little issues uh, here and there, took some of the advice that people have mentioned uh, while they've been printing it, tried to make it a little bit easier to print, but also hollowed it out so you can fill it with money and uh, save all your change. And um, you'll notice uh, the bottom of the rocket now has these flat spots here to make it a little bit easier to print. Uh, anyway, uh, I'll go through the whole designing process, but uh, uh, one of the last cool things about this rocket is now that... Uh, this top nose cone that I mentioned uh, that was kind of difficult to print, well, there's something really neat about it, and uh, hopefully if you print this for your kids or even for yourself, um, it has, that you'll notice here, if I hit F4, I can see the kind of faceted edges. It has this really cool little pattern here. It's kind of like a snake-like pattern. What this is, is a locking mechanism for the top of this rocket. So I'd like to make several more of these, so there's really complicated little locks, but basically to put this top on you have to turn it or put it down and then you have to turn it <laughs> and then you have to lift it back up and then turn it again or right, this way and then back down so it actually locks into these little nubs in the side of the rocket so it's almost like a little a little lock so that the kids can't get to the, the change inside <laughs> but anyway so uh stay tuned i'm going to go ahead and um basically deconstruct the rocket here as you see it um one thing that's uh, both great and terrible about 3D Studio Max is the Boolean system. Uh, this pro Boolean system actually happens to work quite well. It does a great job of kind of creating clean Booleans, but also it can be very time consuming. So throughout the course of these videos, and this video in particular, uh, I'm probably going to skip ahead through a lot of the Booleans because it could take up to a minute and a minute and a half in some cases to actually union two pieces together as the geometry gets more complicated. So in this particular example, I already happened to, if you select these parts prior, uh, it actually kind of puts them in the buffer so it'll save some time. So what I'd like to do first is I'm going to take this 
I'm just going to hit F12 and just put it off to the side somewhere, so, you know, 10 inches off to the side somewhere, just because we don't need it right now. I'm going to take this model, and I'm going to go ahead and select all of the operands, or the operations inside of the Boolean, copy them out, and then uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you piece by piece how this thing was made. All right, so... <laughs> Uh, as I just mentioned a second ago, um, I selected all the operands and I wanted to copy them out so I can show you the pieces. This actually took about two minutes to happen. So, as I mentioned, uh, 3D Studio Max, while it's a great program, uh, maybe it's, this is because it's a 2011 version, it's very slow uh, for the Booleans. But uh, what I did was erase the original object, and now you can see all of the components that actually make up this rocket. If I hit F4 again, now you can actually see the edges, so I can select individual parts. Now, one other thing you'll notice about 3D Studio Max is sometimes there's a very, a very specific order on how you kind of have to use the booleaning. -ing. <laughs> um, if you find that you're adding things and they might fail or things screw up, if you go ahead and use the boolean in a different order, where you might select, let's say, these parts here first and then the fins, it might actually work fine. So in this particular case, you can see that all of the main parts of the rocket now are their individual components, lines, and spheres, and things. The bottom part is still another boolean, because I, what I did was create these three sets of fins, made a boolean out of them, and then added that to the other boolean. So, it might be a little complicated, but basically the way the way you deal with 3D Studio Max is just kind of try and use a booleans. If they don't work, then go ahead and try it in a different order. So instead of selecting object 1, 2, 3, maybe you try 1, 3, 2, and maybe it'll actually work out for you. Okay, it's a bit too much, but... Uh, when I first started designing this model, really what I wanted to do was go ahead and, um, you know, I knew I wanted to make a rocket, but also you have to think about how you want to organize that rocket. So in this particular example, the easiest way to do that was to create a central kind of core, a central body for the rocket itself, and then have things um, around it as far as fins or, or rivets or whatever. Well, I knew that if you keep things on a, on a kind of an ordered path, as far as these three fins are every 120 degrees, it's very easy to go ahead and create one set of something and then mirror it or, you know, array it around or rotate it, or whatever you're doing. So in this particular example, I can go ahead and take these off. Oop. Yeah, actually that too. I can take th this off. And now I'm left with just one. So all I really have to work on is this one fin and I can copy that around. The same with these rivets. These rivets here, in the front especially, are just mirrored back here. And they're mirrored back here. So it's just 120 degrees where they're they're kind of uh, rotated around. Uh, these rivets up here, I think, are every... What was it? Every uh, four, 40 degrees? Something like that. Um, so I, I'm slowly kind of deconstructing this rocket so you can see what's happening. But there's a lot of different tools that we're using 3D Studio Max to make this happen. So, the main rocket body itself, I'm actually, you know what, I'm going to take this, put these off to the side for now, so I'm going to move this over another six inches, just to get it out of the way, so we don't have to deal with it. This is the main rocket body. Now, the cool thing about this is that you'll see that the main body itself is just a single line, which you'll see here. I'll go to the front view by hitting F. Now you'll see, and if you actually right-click in 3D Studio Max and hit Isolate Selection, you can isolate what you're working on. So now here you can see, this is the spline, I'm sorry, turn off this little light bulb, and that'll turn off that modifier. This is the spline that I used to go ahead and, and then lathe it around and basically revolve it around to make like a solid object. Now this line, you'll see here's the bottom of the, the lower cone, here's the body itself, these happen to be the kind of ridges that define the two different, two different areas of the, the, or I guess three different sections of the actual body. And this is the very top of the cone. Now, what you'll notice that's different about this model, if you've seen our previous models, uh, like the one I showed earlier, this one is hollow inside. So what we did was, this is the actual wall here for the actual model. And everything inside here is hollow. So by taking this spline and adding a lathe modifier, which goes 360 degrees. If I turn that back on, now we have a solid body to start working on. Now, one of the cool things about 3D Studio Max is that um, if you ever want to change these modifiers down the road, it 
kind of retains a lot of the original data. So I can add the lathe modifier, but I can also modify the original line quite simply. So I can just take certain points in that line, like let's say certain vertices, move them down. And if I were to turn the lathe back on, now if I go inside the object, that center now is, is pulled down. So you can kind of see the, the rotation, you know, the, uh, area here. So it's really great for, I guess you could say, parametric modeling. I would not call this a parametric modeling software um, in the fullest, but it's definitely more parametric than a lot of the other ones out there. All right, so this is the main modifier. This is the main, um, you know, body for the actual, uh, uh, you know, rocket itself. Let's go ahead and um, get out of isolation here. Now you'll see when I had that main body done, which that includes the kind of ridges here. I'm going to go ahead and make this red so we know which one we're, we're talking about here. That's just this body here. And you'll see that it has these kind of defined ridges here and this kind of separate area here as well as the top. Well, these little rivets are simply just spheres. <laughs> and so the funny thing was you just take a sphere, stick it inside your model. It's actually penetrating the model itself. You can kind of tell here that it's actually going inside the model. What we're going to do later is Boolean them as a union, so that this actually will union to this body, and anything that's actually intersecting will disappear. Uh, right now, if we were to go ahead and slice this mo model, because it's not really a solid model, uh, the slicing will get all screwed up, where it'll try and run around the outside of the model, and then go inside, or do something really weird with these rivets. So, the Booleaning, Boolean operation is a very important thing when it comes to... Um, making solid manifold models. So when you're designing, keep that in mind. If you can make an object as solid as possible without having to use Boolean operations, that's key. Whereas this entire model now is essentially just one big spline because these rivets, uh, that makes it much easier to go ahead later and Boolean, and, you know, either add, union, or subtract por portions of the model. Uh, hopefully that makes some sort of sense there. So anyway, so here's the center core of the model, as I mentioned. The rivets here were simply just spheres, which I went ahead and took one sphere and then rotated around and created all these different spheres and rivets around the model. Uh, later on, I went ahead and made that an edible poly, which means it lost its original kind of parametric uh, sphere variables, but now it's like a solid um, polygonal model. This is nice because if I have to go in later and ever modify uh, these rivets, like you'll see here, this actually dips down below a little bit. Uh, I, that's okay because it's such a small rivet, but there's certain portions of your model that if you have to modify later, you can go ahead and, and select the actual vertices of each individual point and move them around as much as you need. All right, so that's kind of the rivets and the main body of the model. Now these these portholes, if you will, these were a little tricky because when you put them on the model, they're not just they're not just an object that's been lathed or that's been kind of generated to be flat. They actually curve around. You'll see the top of the model. If I hit the T for top view, they actually curve one way. If I hit F for front view, they actually curve another way as well. So these 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 portholes had to curve in kind of two directions, and that's a little bit more tricky than sticking a flat thing on the outside of your model because obviously our, our the base, the core of our rocket is curved. So the cool thing with uh, 3D Studio Max again is uh, I started with a a line. So if I hit, if I right click and go to isolate selection, here's what that line looks like. It's just a simple spline, and it's uh, this is the outside of that kind of porthole. This is the flat spot around the porthole, and this is the inside that is actually the part that uh, in intersects the model. So if we take this uh, spline we just created, uh, what we want to do is lathe it around to create this kind of radial, uh, this kind of circular pattern. So if we use a lathe modifier, uh, to add modifiers, you can always go, you can select your line and go to the dropdown. This is all the modifiers you can play with in uh, 3D Studio Max. Again, um, this is not a tutorial on just Max, but uh, play with them all, try them all, because uh, the more tools you learn, the more you can use. So in this particular case, I already had the lathe modifier. So if I turn this light bulb back on, that's what it looks like. So it'll take that spline and lathe it all the way around and create this radial uh, pattern or object. Now, in this case, the backside looks pretty solid. You'll see it all comes to a point here. 
the front side actually you can kind of tell here it's actually has it's actually open it's actually hollow uh, we could fix that in other ways but uh, the way to solve that in this particular case was to add a, a modifier in the future so ignore that for now now we have this kind of radio pattern and this uh, porthole now if I get out of isolation mode again so you can see the rocket the problem is let me uh, zoom in here if you hit Z that'll zoom in on whatever object you have selected it kind of kind of fits here but it also squishes on the bottom it's not really correct the the center here doesn't follow the curve so you have part of the red model coming through like it's a very sloppy way of, of making a you know a porthole or in this case you know something that's stuck on the outside of your model so what we had to do was start skewing it and bending it because it doesn't it didn't fit right now the more modifiers you can add the better because you can always go ahead and tweak those modifiers later so in this particular case we took the, the one we started with, the porthole we wanted, and then we ha added a skew modifier. So turn that on. What that did first was skew it towards the bottom. So you can kind of see in this view, it kicks out the bottom. So it actually fits that kind of curve a little bit better. You can especially, especially see it in the front view. If we modify this number, it'll skew it more or less. So that's very useful. Uh, I hit control Z to go back to, you know, undo, to go to the number that used to be there. Now we're getting somewhere. It's looking a little bit better. Um, you can ignore these spheres because those were added later, obviously, once I had the porthole defined. But now this is still looking good in one direction, but at the other direction, the top view, if you hit T for top view, it's still not curved the other way because it has to follow this bend of the actual body. So to fix that, you can go ahead and turn on the bend modifier. Uh, right before that, what I did was I'm going to go ahead and right click and go to isolate selection again. I wanted to fix this open hole first since there's kind of a hole inside the model because if, if you're trying to use that later it's going to be a problem. So first what I did was add a cap holes modifier and what that does is it caps any open holes. So now this is now a watertight solid manifold or I guess a solid model that I can go ahead and modify with the next modifier called a bend. That does exactly what it says. It bends it around a curve a little bit. If I increase the angle, you can see what it's doing. It's just bending it. Here's this negative bending. This is positive. Now, if I hit exit isolation mode, you'll see it's uh, hit T for top. It's starting to curve around that model a little bit more. So here's without the bend. This is with the bend. And you know what? You could even bend it more if you felt it wasn't enough. But it's great because you could always go back later and, and you know adjust these modifiers. I could always go back later and adjust the skew but it'll also keep the bend on there as well. So it's really fun to keep playing with these models, um, create as many of these uh, parametric kind of uh, modifiers as possible because if you have to tweak it, it makes it much easier than dealing with like a, a solid uh, polygonal or mesh-based model. All right, so up to this point, we hope you've kind of followed along and uh, seen how to start creating a rocket in 3D Studio Max. Um, so We've already shown you how to break down this boolean we've created and uh, all the different components in the rocket. And uh, in the next step, we'll start showing you the rest of the, the components, how to array them, how to uh, copy them radially, and then go ahead and boolean them together to make the full G-Create rocket. So check out part two if you want to see some more, and uh, hope you stay tuned.